All right. We are right here, right back. I went out and snagged myself a guest right here. Sounds uh, the sheriff, Mark Daniels, did not make it, so uh, that's why we couldn't get him, uh, find him. So uh, we have Robert Rector with the Heritage Foundation right here with us on WCRS. How are you doing today? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Now, this morning we did have a former senator, the great senator from South Carolina, mm-hmm. Jim DeMint, with us, and you are also with the Heritage Foundation. What do you exactly do? Um, I work on immigration, on welfare and poverty and the cost of the welfare system. I've uh, been doing that at Heritage for a long time. And what are you finding? I understand you uh, just released a new report. Yeah, I just testified before the House of Representatives about the part of the fiscal cost of, of Obama's amnesty. You know, in the United States, we have at least 11 million illegal immigrants. And uh, Obama just granted amnesty to about 4 million of them. Now, it's held up in the courts, but he, he wants to give them amnesty. One of the things that happens when he grants them amnesty is he immediately gives every single one of those four million people a social security number. Now these amnesty recipients on average have a 10th grade education. And I like, I'm a crazy person, I I ask people the question, do you believe that a person with a 10th grade education pays more in taxes than they get in government benefits? I've asked that of hundreds and hundreds of people all across the country. Everybody says, no, they don't, except a few people in the Senate of the United States. Somehow they think these people are just going to pay just miles and miles of taxes, you know? They're just a, such a boon to the government and to our economy. But you have 4 million people, 10th grade education, you grant every single one of those individuals access to Social Security and Medicare, which are the most expensive entitlements on planet Earth. There are also entitlements that are already going bankrupt. Now, those individuals are going to pay a few dollars in because they make low wages, pay a few dollars into Social Security and Medicare, but about 25 years from now, they're going to start to draw benefits out. How much will that cost? That will cost the U.S. taxpayers $1.4 trillion. $1.4 trillion. What is $1.4 trillion, to put that into common terms? That's $20,000 per taxpaying household in the United States. That's the first round of cost from Obama's amnesty. Social Security, Medicare, as everybody already knows, they're already going bankrupt. What we're doing here is putting another 4 million very low wage, very poorly educated people into those entitlements and piling on additional government debt. In addition, Obama gives them something called the Earned Income Tax Credit. This has nothing to do with taxes. It is a cash check of about $7,000 a year that the government sends to low-wage workers. People say, well, the illegal immigrants, they work. Therefore, they must be net contributors to the government. But the fact of the matter is that the welfare system subsidizes low-wage workers. The Earned Income Tax Credit is the most expensive cash welfare program in the United States, costs about $80 billion a year. He's giving them access to it. Not only that, he's giving them retroactive benefits. He says it's not enough just to give you six or $7,000 in cash. We want to pay you for the work that you did while you were illegal, so we're going to give you your EITC benefits for the previous three years. How much does that cost? Well, it's about $24 billion, okay? And then it just goes on and on and on. He doesn't give them access to Obamacare right away, but how long do you think that's going to last? Maybe one election cycle? Then they're going to get Obamacare. That's about another $30 billion. The bottom line is that any individual who has a 10th grade education, whether they're born in South Carolina or Illinois or Mexico or Guatemala, if you give them access to all these government programs, they are going to draw down at least 3 or $4 in government benefits for every dollar of taxes that they pay in. doesn't mean that they're not working. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that they're bad people or anything like that. But we have a system that doesn't ask very much of low-skill individuals and gives them a lot in benefits. We can barely afford that system for U.S. citizens, people born here. But you start giving that same set of benefits to anybody who comes across the border illegally, and we will go bankrupt even more quickly than we already are. 
So, uh, so what's the answer, uh, Robert? The answer is, is, first of all, do not give illegal immigrants access to Social Security and Medicare. Do not give them access to welfare. I say the simplest thing in the world that would have stopped this from the very beginning is every time anyone gets up there and talks about a pathway to citizenship, just be honest and say this is a pathway to citizenship and welfare. And no one in the U.S. public supports that. But that's what every single one of these bills does, either from Republicans or Democrats. They give 11 million illegal immigrants access to the largest and most expensive welfare system in the world. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, they pay a fine. But the average illegal immigrant, when you give him access to Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, food stamps, public housing, earned income tax credit, and all those things, the total benefits that he's going to collect over a lifetime come to about a million dollars. That's how expensive government is. Now, he will pay a fine. He'll pay about $1,000. Pretty good deal. What does he do? What does he do to earn that million dollars? Well, he broke our laws. That's why he gets that money. You know, but one of the issues really is how do we fix all our entitlement system, period? Isn't that really part of it? Because if you don't fix that, I mean, if we fix that, we would, we would solve a lot of problems there. Well, the entitlement system is already going bankrupt. We can't afford the Social exactly. Security and Medicare that we already have. One way not to fix it is to take 4 million or 11 million people with a 10th grade education and pile their benefits on top. It sounds Don't, like you're being against those poor people that only have a 10th grade education, though, no, Robert. I, I mean, can't they go out and move themselves forward and maybe uh, get a higher education? Well, that you know, these are people that came here with a 10th grade education. They do work hard. They don't speak English very well. And one of the arguments is, oh, well, they'll go back to college. No. They're going to continue to work. They're going to continue to earn maybe twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars a year like similar people with that level of education. Doesn't mean they're bad people, doesn't mean they're lazy. It does mean that they're never going to get very much in wages from our economy. And they they will pay taxes because the government taxes people in ways they can't even imagine. They pay a lot of sales tax and they pay property tax even if they rent an apartment. They buy lottery tickets sure. and all of that. Sure. But they're never going to begin to pay in taxes what they take out in benefits. And again... I guess that's why I'm saying, don't we have to fix, though, overall, because we have a food stamp program that is right. out of control. We do have some programs that are out of control, whether it's immigrants or not. Yes. Um, people like to say, well, we, we shouldn't have a cradle-to-grave welfare state in the United States. We, we've had one for 40 years. We have the most expensive welfare system in the country. Uh, we spend a trillion dollars a year on cash food, housing, and medical care for poor people. Uh, that would be nice to rein that back. But one way not to rein it back is to take 11 million people with a 10th grade education and give them access to those programs. But we're uh, only going to have 4 million, right, that are actually this is four, that, That's uh, just 4 million, so it's a bargain deal, right? <laughs> that's right. It's a bargain deal. You know, the funny thing about that is when you look at the Republican leadership, they, in the House, they want to give all 11 million access to all this stuff. So I guess Obama is more is more conservative. Than more they, conservative, than yeah. What are we talking about, John Boehner here? <laughs> well, the Republican leadership. The Republican yeah. leadership. Okay. Well, you know, I think that um, it, what if we just followed the laws that were on the books? Absolutely. That is the solution. You asked me earlier, what's the solution? I say the solution is to do what we've never done. Back in 1986, we granted amnesty to about one and a half million people. We promised the U.S. citizens this would be the one and only time we would ever do amnesty. We would never do it again. Uh -huh. And in exchange for that one-time amnesty that would never, ever be repeated, Congress promised, and they always keep their word. Right. We've seen that. <laughs> they promised that they would make it illegal to hire illegal immigrants and that we would enforce that law. And since 1986, we have not enforced that law for one single minute. 
Okay, not one minute, not under Republican presidents, not under Democratic presidents, never enforced it for Why? one minute. Why? Because the business industry wants cheap labor and low wages, and they don't want that law enforced. And, uh, and so it so has... So it's all about the money. It's all about the money. It's all about left-wing politicians who'd like to import voters that will vote for a bigger government, and, it, and it's about the money. The first thing we ought to do... Is, is enforce that law from 1986. And how would we do that? There's a system called E-Verify. Mm -hmm. What E-Verify does is if you come in and you apply for a job, mm -hmm. you have to give your Social Security number and so forth and so on. Well, illegal immigrants do that, and they tell that the Social Security number is 00000. zero, 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 zero. E-Verify immediately checks that and with phenomenal accuracy says, you're not who you're pretending to be. You're not a legal worker, mm -hmm. and, and you can stop that. But to do that, you have to require all employers to use that system. Right now, employers have the right to cheat and to hide. And what another thing that happens with that is that honest employers who try to comply with the law and only hire legal immigrants and U.S. citizens, they're put at a financial disadvantage against the employers who cheat. We should take away the right to cheat against the law and require all employers to use that system. It would immediately cut off about 4 million illegals from employment and open all those jobs up for unemployed Americans. Now, that brings up another question, though, because, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about, you know, that they're taking jobs, but yet... Um, in the farming industry, in the tourist industry, particularly in South Carolina, they say they can't find the help that will work the jobs. I think that that is probably a valid point in agriculture. I'm not sure about the tourist industry. I don't know that. But most illegal immigrants are not in the tourist industry, and they're not. Well, they work in the service part of the tourism industry. They cleaning the hotels, doing this type of job. We have, we have millions of unemployed, low-skilled American workers, and I think those jobs have to go to them first. We also have a situation where the wages for that sort of low-skilled American workers really haven't gone up for 20 years. I think that's a tragedy. You know, one of the things that always interests me, because we have a farm bill, um, and the farm bill that uh, passed up in Congress, one of the points is, though, the immigrant workers actually get paid more than, than our good old American guys and gals that could mm -hmm. go out there and work because they pay for housing, they pay for transportation, and they pay them a wage yes. when they bring immigrants in. The other thing is that in many cases what's happening is that the employer uh, goes for a, a, an immigrant worker because they're available there. If they weren't there, it's not that there are no workers around, but they'd have to maybe go find them. Um, I'm from uh, the Shenandoah Valley. If anybody remembers the TV show, The Waltons, that's where I'm. Of course, I'm, the Waltons. I'm from. I'm from right south of Waltons Mountain, and uh, and there are plenty of people up there that don't have jobs and who'd be very happy to work for twelve dollars an hour, for fifteen dollars an hour, something like that. But but you'd have you have to go let them know that those jobs exist, and uh, and. I think that the American dream has to belong to Americans first. We have millions of Americans are suffering because they can't get jobs, because their wages are low, and yet we continue to bring in millions of illegal workers to compete with them in the labor market. Every economist agrees that that's driven down the wages of the most vulnerable American workers. Whose idea is that? Whose idea of America is to drive down the wages of the most of vulnerable American workers by bringing in illegal labor and then giving that illegal labor access to welfare and the right to vote and determine the future of the United States. I agree. I agree. It's just it's phenomenal. But I do feel that, uh, that our, our people should be getting paid more to work in the farms than the immigrants. But uh, I've got a case that I have right in front of me where, where this farmer says that he cannot, and yet it costs him more. He agrees. Mm -hmm. It costs him more because of, he has to provide housing and, and uh, transportation, and he cannot find, and when he does find workers, they don't stay. Mm -hmm. Well, he's lucky if he gets the immigrant labor to stay as well. Um, I do think that agriculture is one area where a guest worker program may be viable, but I, in the most of the rest of it, to say that 
you know, we used to say 10 years ago, they kind of, this has kind of dropped away. Americans won't do this kind of work. I mean, that's just so ridiculous. It was an absolute falsehood when it was said 10 years ago, and it's idiotic in this economy with all the unemployed and underemployed Americans. What do you think about, um, isn't there something in front of, um, I know there is, about uh, technology train graduating from college, rather keeping that as a labor force than having our American guys and gals getting the jobs. Well, that's a special visa program, too, Yeah, isn't that's it? called H-1Bs. Um, that's a more complicated issue. High-skill immigrants, if you bring them in legally, uh, if they have a college degree, for example, they will pay their way. They will pay more in taxes than they get back in government benefits. Some people argue that they're also displacing American workers with those right. same skill sets. I've never really know, I don't know about that. I do know that they do, that high skill labor doesn't impose these costs on the taxpayers. But the, one of the huge problems of the current immigration system is that both illegal immigrants, which are overwhelmingly low skilled, low wage, and a major part of the legal immigration system through chain migration, those are very low skilled people. Doesn't mean they're lazy. There's a myth in our system that people that get welfare don't work at all. That hasn't been true in 40 years. They may not work full time, but for example, the most expensive uh, welfare program we have in cash is the earned income credit. You can't pay, get that unless you, unless you work. And uh, so individuals who come and work at low wages, they, uh, they are going to receive a lot in welfare and people don't realize that. The group in society that receives the most welfare benefits are legal, low-skill immigrants. And the illegals are exactly like that. The main, only difference is they don't have access to all this stuff. Amnesty gives them access to everything. Absolutely. Well, you know, it, it's been, as always, to uh, learn more about it from the Heritage Foundation. Robert Rector, thanks so much for taking time to talk to us this afternoon. Thank you.